Married to Real Estate is a popular show on HGTV. It's also a reality show about Egypt Sherrod, her husband, Mike Jackson, their three daughters, and their business, updating and flipping houses. The couple shared with me how they successfully managed being married to real estate and married to each other. I sat down with them at their Indigo Road Home Furnishings and Real Estate Office in Marietta. What you see on the TV show is what you get when you sit down with Egypt and Mike. They are popular because they are real. And when people see them in public, anything can happen. Okay, so I was at a big box store the other day, right? And this young lady recognized who I was. So humbly, I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? Appreciate you for um, watching the show. She goes, you have to take a picture for my mother. I said, let's double it. Put on FaceTime. So she puts mama on FaceTime. She has a bonnet on. <laughs> and she goes, baby, what friend? She turns the phone. She goes, falls off the back of the couch, <laughs> pops up on the TV screen again. And she goes, Mike, where is Egypt? I just love you two so much. And, and then she's talking to her daughter. I can't believe you got me on my head with my bonnet. So I can't believe you. So but hi, Mike. And, and so this is funny to us because at home, we're just us. It's, yeah. But we're a, a woman with a bonnet on, uh -huh. true. I have this video. <laughs> she's, we're leaving out the door and she's just coming in and she notices Mike and just screams and hollers uh -huh. and her teeth fell out. <laughs> It's on video. I can provide the footage. You want the footage? Love you and thank I you. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Y'all come. Let my teeth in. Come on. Her teeth fall out, and then she goes, "Ah, sorry." Puts them back in and says, "I love Mike," and wraps her leg around him. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm holding the camera. So apparently that's what I do. I'm the, I'm the, the camera woman. It's how folks <laughs> react to Mike when they see him. So we're, we'll get stopped in the supermarket, and it's, hey! You know how you get your baby to sleep in your in her own room, Egypt? And I'll get, you know, the whole line. Or, hey, I love you guys. All right, this is how you keep it sexy for your husband and uh. stay married for, <laughs> for 40 years. It's that kind of love, sisterhood, family, auntieism yeah. that we that we get and we we really do enjoy yeah. it. It was love at first sight, but it took fate to seal the deal. The home improvement call that finally got these two together a year after meeting plus how they managed to keep family first on and off camera. Egypt and Mike dated for six years before marrying in 2010. They met when she was a national radio personality and he was a DJ. The first time I ever saw her was at a nightclub she was hosting and it was from afar and the light was literally only shining on her. And I said, that's my wife. Never met in my life. So that evening, I did everything impossible to try to get through the security. You know, I jumped over barricades, all types of stuff. <laughs> Got to her, said, listen, let's exchange numbers. I'm, I'm, you know, bringing it down a little bit. Said, let's exchange numbers, didn't happen. So now, six months later, Puerto Rican Day Parade float, New York City, I'm on a float with my group. She happens to walk past me three times. I didn't it, even I realize. I didn't happen to walk past. I was trying to get his attention, but I was one of those women, like, I didn't know how to talk to a guy. I have absolutely no game, have absolutely no Mac. So I was hoping I would walk by and, oh, he would, <laughs> he would notice me from afar. And it just didn't happen. So by the seventh time of walking by, I just went and got some French fries. And of course, that's when he says hello, when I'm stuffing my face with <laughs> so, so uh, it still didn't happen. We didn't get together there. Still didn't either. happen because you had your girlfriend with you and I was like, oh, you're not about to shoot me down in front of your girlfriend. And inside I was like, gosh, I wish he asked me for my number. But she said, cause I jumped off no shirt. She goes, oh, if I knew you look like that, I probably would have gave you the number. I'm like, oh, so what did I look like? No kill last <laughs> you, time? You look like caramel biscuits <laughs> with honey on it. So <laughs> fast forward, <laughs> six months, we meet again, didn't happen. Then another six months, she gets a call. For uh, a roof job. Yes, yeah, so, well, so I was flipping a house in Newark, New Jersey, and, you know, I kind of got into it with the construction team. Yeah. And I decided I was going to watch a video on how to tar a roof. No, you didn't. So I got up <laughs> on the roof and started tarring it, but it had a rotted spot, and I fell through the rotted spot in the roof. So right about then, I realized I needed some help. Mm -hmm. I called my mentor, who sent his team over, coincidentally, and so he gets out the car, I say, I know you. Wait a minute, I didn't ask for a DJ, I asked for a contractor. <laughs> 
So he says, well, I can leave. You want me to leave? Uh -huh. <laughs> but that's kind of the start of us. Yeah. How we, we fell in love over black mold. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's fascinating about this is you two actually do a podcast uh -huh. where you talk about marriage and money. Yes. What was the genesis of that? What was the genesis of that, Michael Jackson? Well, that came about <laughs> because I figured we needed to reach a broader audience. So with our show, there's a certain caliber, there's a certain age rank, right? But when you think of podcasts, you think of Generation Z, you think millennials. And I said, that's our audience as well. And we have more to say. And our thing is, we're not experts at it, but we have some experience. So why not open the mic and tell people about our experiences? So it was a great idea. I just wasn't ready to hear it at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and he literally, so we're in bed, Monica, and he's, babe, babe, I got an idea. This happens a lot, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike. <laughs> why don't we do a podcast? When are we gonna fit a podcast into our life? Mike, babe, I got it. Okay, talk to me in the morning. <laughs> Meanwhile, morning comes and I say, you know, that was an amazing idea. And usually that's what happens in mm -hmm. our relationship. He's like the quarterback, he'll come up with all the ideas and I'm the running back. Give it to me, I'll run the play. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have our podcast yeah. now, which is a lot of fun. Very much so. Yeah, a lot, yeah. people have been getting a lot from it. Most of the feedback is, it's really great to see a couple that can balance work, mm -hmm. have fun, still love each other, and teach others about healthy marriage. Right. So, yeah. Without being too ratchet. We're, we're a little ratchet. <laughs> the ratchetness doesn't hurt. And you, and, and you really don't balance, you juggle. Mm -hmm. So how do you all juggle? Oof, ah, listen, it is an extreme juggling act. We just happen to have an amazing support system. Yeah. It would not work otherwise. We got the aunties, we have the uncles, we got the cousins here. You know, we have people flying from New Jersey to support us, yeah. people coming from, from Florida. And that's all because they believe in what we have to offer and where we're headed, right? It does take a village. We have three kids mm -hmm. and they're of three different age ranges. We literally have a 22 year old. That's my baby, Simone. Mm -hmm. um, Kendall's 11 and yep. five foot nine. Now, Monica, I don't know when that Ooh. happened. And then Harper, she's four. But she's you mean boss 49? baby. Yeah, she's like <laughs> we literally believe some sometimes at night she gets up, puts on a suit, and goes out to save uh -huh. the world. I mean, uh -huh. that's this child. Harper, tell Daddy how much you wanted to charge for lemonade. How much? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? Inflation. Inflation. <laughs> They all need something different. Yeah. And we're just really grateful we have an incredible support system and family. Yeah. We're there for them just like they're there for us. Mm -hmm. Our big dream is to sell all of our homes and build a homestead where yeah. everybody lives together. That's, mm -hmm. I'm speaking that into existence. But oh, you think about it every day. So I started designing. It's coming. So that, that is our dream, Matt. Because family's yeah. everything yeah. for us. But outside of the support system, it works because we work. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing else will work if we didn't. Mm -hmm. So we continue to make sure we communicate, make sure we like each other, make date. sure we continue to date, Flirt. right? Not just mom and dad and business partners. Mm -hmm. We gotta have that in between as well. Otherwise it just would just be all over the place. The funny thing I think I've seen on the show is when you all disagree. <laughs> what you don't see is what's on the editing room floor. <laughs> You see it cleaned up, uh -huh. but there is a moment every now and again, can y'all turn off the cameras? Okay, babe, can we really talk <laughs> about this? It's, it's real life. Yeah. So we're, we're constantly evolving mm -hmm. individually, which means we have to leave room for each other to grow right. as well as a couple. So every few years we find that we're in this phase of where we have to re-meet. Mm -hmm. Not who was Mike 20 years ago. Babe, what do you need from me now? Yeah. What, who do I need to be to step up to, to be there for you mm -hmm. and support you the way you need me now? Up next, we take a trip down memory lane. How Egypt and Mike's humble beginnings continue to drive their success today. Egypt and Mike are from the Northeast. He's from New York with two sisters. She's from Philadelphia. I'm the eldest of four. Uh, I have a sister and two brothers. My mother raised my sister and I, and we're very close. We're 17 months apart. Mm -hmm. If you meet her, her name's Tawan. If you meet her, you think she's the eldest because <laughs> yeah. that's just how she is. She's a nurse. 
So she's always taking care of everybody. Mm -hmm. You need to sit down. You're doing too much. Get a real job. <laughs> she doesn't think what I do is real. She didn't understand TV. You need. You should have stayed in law school. You know. <laughs> and that's the thing. Originally, you were supposed to be a lawyer. Uh, well, that was the plan. But you went to communication school too. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> so long story. I did an internship as a paralegal and quickly determined that being a lawyer was not in the cards for me because I wanted to have fun. I wanted to be happy every day, ignite joy wherever I went. And when I looked around that office, which shall remain nameless because they work for me now. Um, when I look around that office, they were very unhappy. And I would talk to many of the women who were wonderful and, and had become mentors at some point. And they were saying that they spend so much time you know, looking at paperwork and documents and posturing themselves to fight, that when you spend 50% of your time at work, it innately becomes a part of who you are, mm -hmm. the very fabric of your being. And they wish that they had chosen a career that was more joyful. Mm -hmm. And really taking that bit of information, I realized that I couldn't do what everyone else expected me to do. I had to follow my own path. So <laughs> while she's growing up, <laughs> you're growing up where? I'm growing up in Hempstead, Long Island, which is in New York City, right? Um, single mother and tons of cousins, as I said. I'm in an area where you didn't know if you were going to make it or not, right? So I, I'm happy from where I come from. But again, like I said, the area was you make it or you don't. There was no really in between. So when I go back, I look around and those that do recognize me are so proud. It's a great feeling, an amazing feeling. And they're like, keep going. Mm -hmm. You got to keep doing what you're doing because you're representing us well. And I'm like, I can't stop. Mm -hmm. I can't stop. And I want to bring my daughters back there so they can see where dad came from and all that he had to do to get out of mm -hmm. the neighborhood he was in. Right. Um, but I came up, you know, humble beginnings, um, worked with my, with my grandfather and my uncle. Who taught you how to do all this stuff you do now? Grandfather and uncle. They had their own construction business, so I would always be with them. Now, in construction, you're not supposed to be on these sites unless you're 16 and then actually doing work at 18. But, you know, it's their construction business, and back then, it wasn't as stringent. So we would be there, they would be showing me things, but they wouldn't allow me to. Until I got up a certain age and they would say, go get that, go do this, be mindful of this, let me show you what's, how the strings go. And that bug just stayed with me. So when I was DJing, I'd, for instance, I'd travel the world, be DJing in Dubai, come back, be on a construction site, 6 a.m. in the morning. And I met him in that sort of Dubai environment. And what I fell in love with was the humility of his every day. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with the grunt work. He was this gorgeous man who didn't know how handsome he was and had a heart of gold. Uh, I got to see him when he was working on one of my investment properties in just a completely different light. Mm -hmm. And that is what was super sexy to me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Forget all that DJ stuff, sir. You know how to fix something? And um, yeah, I, I love his humility. And he's been the same one since day one. You know what I mean? When we, obviously you get to this point when you have children, we always want that next generation to do better. Mm -hmm. We always want to provide more so they don't have to struggle the way that we struggled. And then Mike and I asked ourselves one day, are we actually uh, handicapping our children? Mm. Because we're giving them so much and protecting them so much. They have to build grit the same way we had to build grit. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, walking to school or catching the XH bus and in the subway to get to school when I was seven. You know, back then you could, it you was could, safe. Right. And my grandparents would send us around the corner to go get the groceries, mm -hmm. you know, and we had to make $10 stretch. But that taught us the value of a dollar mm -hmm. as well. There were so many things that our kids have not had to do. So we decided to take a trip down memory lane. And remember we went to Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up on Widener Place in Philadelphia, the Broad and Alney area, in a little town home that my grandparents purchased for $17,000. And when I was in school, I lived in the same bedroom that my mom and my aunt shared. Mm. And it was probably the size of of a closet, you could fit a twin bed in there, nothing more. But what you could fit were your dreams. And we, we were vision boarding before you knew what vision boarding was. Mm -hmm. Cutting out pictures from Black Beat and right on magazine and <laughs> places you wanted to go, people you wanted to meet, Michael Jackson on the ceiling, Prince on the ceiling. And I used to jump on the bed and kiss them both because Michael Jackson was my husband and Prince was my lover. 
and I married Michael Jackson. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but you know, I say all that to say we decided to bring our kids down memory lane so they could really understand that we weren't born into this. Mm -hmm. We had to work. And long when we're gone, you're going to have to work to sustain it yeah. and teach your kids how to do the same, not just wealth, but character. Mm -hmm. So we took our kids to 1703 Widener Place. It's a lovely family that lives there now. I cried when I saw them sitting on the steps because I had memories. And my daughter just stared, Kendall, you used to live here? <laughs> How? And I said, yup. And mommy used to jump double dutch right there. That was the highlight of the week. Mm -hmm. And mommy got in her first fight on that terrace. And Nana and, Ma and May May came outside in their pink curlers and made me fight those girls so I didn't have to run home from school <laughs> every day anymore. And, but, but that's the stuff. That's the stuff mm -hmm. that we want to keep alive for our kids so that they, number one, understand mommy and daddy love you and we're going to be here for you, but you've got to grow and, and create your own path, your own indigo road, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not going to always be beautiful, but that's the stuff that builds character mm -hmm. and that'll make your story worth telling. Yep. So you've got so much going on on HGTV. Mm -hmm. How do your kids, particularly Simone, because she's mm -hmm. the oldest, mm -hmm. eldest of the three, how do they carve out their piece of who they are? It's difficult being your daughters. <laughs> um, to be honest to with you, I don't know if they 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 try to compare themselves or live up to who we are. Um, especially with this day and age where a lot of teenagers are comparing themselves to what they see on social media, yeah. right? Yeah. So for us, we just happen to be cool parents. Still to come, each of and Mike share what they love most about each other. Plus, he's a local politician, award-winning author, and a person you should know. I go one-on-one -on -one with Michael Thurman when we return. Egypt and Mike are in their third season of Married to Real Estate, and they believe in keeping it real. It looks like you're forcing it. Because I only That's have enough. this one left. Well, that was one of the biggest things for us behind the scenes. We were very adamant about having say in what the audience sees. We had to have the right to be ourselves. Otherwise, we were not we going to do it. As a matter of fact, the way the entire show started, it was during COVID. A lot came out of that. Mike was following our business on his cell phone mm -hmm. around the house. And at one point I sat down and looked at all the footage and said, there's a show here. Mm -hmm. They edited it together. We put the sizzle in, took it to HGTV. And that is how Married to Real Estate came mm -hmm. about. So when, you know, when things go into development and a lot of people have their hands in it, and Mike and I felt like maybe we were slipping away and we had to have a heart to heart of, this is gonna be about our business, our family and our love, right. which this has got to work after mm -hmm. TV. So if we can't stay in charge of that narrative, we can't do the right. show. Mm -hmm. And luckily we had some incredible people who I'd already been working with for years at HGTV who said, y'all got it. So I have to ask you, what is the thing you love most about him? His heart. I really, well, there's a lot to love about Mike, but. Hey now, she said keep it PG, hey come girl, on. girl, you know when they leave, it's popping. <laughs> um, we flirt, yeah, he matches my crazy. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. We're both Scorpios. And I our, calm your crazy. Our, no, you match my crazy <laughs> when the cameras aren't on. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're not supposed to work. Right. But it's really, it's like yin and yang. But I really love, his heart. He helps me be a better person. There are moments where, you know how uh, Michelle Obama says, they go low, we go high. I'm like, no, I'm gonna go low real quick. I'm just gonna go low, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna hide. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. God's still working on me. But Mike will remind me, babe, we gotta go high. So he, he really forces me to stretch myself to be the better person that I know I can be, that I love about him. All right, Mike, what do you love about her? Say something good, because I just said something good. Like I was gonna say something this bad. Really good. Stop though. it. <laughs> you look. Um, uh, everything to be honest with you. Sexy chocolate. One of the things I, I said it at my wedding. She's my sunny day, my good news. She's my muse. I say muse even still to this day, because there's so much that she does that inspires me. I mean, we're sitting in a vision that she had, right? And she kept plowing through. When she says she's gonna do something, she does it. So that's why when she comes to me with a list, I'm like, oh God, this is really gonna happen. Let me get my, get, get ready. 
but that is sexy to me because you say it, you do it, right? And one of the things that I also love is the fact of how she remembers things when it comes to business or when it comes to a script or when it comes to having to get something done. She's like, babe, read this for me. And I'm like, okay, this is this, this, and this. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And she'll come right behind me and go, Brrrah. this is all it has to be. And that's sexy to me. It turns me on, I'm like, girl, you go ahead. I'm like, watch this y'all, watch, watch, watch my baby. Watch my baby, <laughs> she got it going on. So for me, again, she's my muse. It's her drive, the tenacity, and it, it just it just keeps me in awe. You wanna go on a date? We go, we're already on a date. Like this you. is part of the date. Thank you don't even know it. Just cute. Just cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of Monica Pearson one-on-one, -on -one, check out the links on your screen and click the subscribe button.